Hey everybody, it's Joey, and I'm here to do a favorite fall slash winter lipsticks. Um, before I get started, um, just want to tell you I'm wearing Angels and Demons by Givenchy perfume. It smells so good. I'm so stupid. Never learn. Okay. <clears throat> All right. It does smell really good, though, you guys. Okay, so anyways. I'm going to do my favorite fall and winter lipsticks. The old Jeffree Star, so I should just say Jeffree Star lipsticks. Afterwards, I'm going to talk about some things. Um, about the beauty community, about other reality shows, about... An update on the Jeffree Star Velour, excuse me, Velour Lip Liner, so stay tuned after the favorite full slash winter lipsticks. I will be talking about an update on that and everything else. If you want, you can just fast forward to that part, but, um, and also I'm going to film an outfit of the day, um, after this video. Okay, so you're going to get two videos tonight or tomorrow. Okay. So the first lipstick is Androgyny. It's what I have on my lips now. This is from his Lovestick collection. Um, I'm not gonna do swatches, but I guess I'll just show you this one because it's on my lips. The only thing bad about this color is that you do have to keep reapplying. But once it's reapplied, it's very pigmented. Um, now, I love this color a lot. I think it's perfect for the fall and winter season completely. This is perfect. He says this is a nude. I don't think this is a nude lipstick. I think it could be seen as a nude on, on darker skin tones, but on every other skin tone, this is not a nude. This is more like a purplish mauve. You know what I mean? Like, and to me, that's not a nude. So, but I do love this color. It is a purple mauve. I'm not going to swatch anything on the back of my hand because if you guys saw my last swatch video, which with the lip below lip liners, I got lipstick all over my jeans, and I'm just not doing that tonight. I will still do swatch videos, but today is not going to be a swatch video. But I do have this one on my on my lips now, so you can see it. But the other ones, it's not going to be swatched. So yeah. I do love this color. It's, I love his lip ammunitions, his cream bullets. It's like creamy, but then a little matte. It's like perfect. Okay. The next color I love in the full slash winter is where is it okay here it is <laughs> delicious by his family collection um to be completely honest with you his family collection was not my favorite collection in fact it probably was my least favorite collection of all the collections he ever did i just didn't like any of the colors um i liked wifey and this one and i nathan was all right but i didn't like his highlighter uh, I didn't try his peach lip scrub, but his pancake and syrup is nice. So basically, the two things that happened from his family collection is the two things I liked, which was delicious lipstick and the pancakes and syrup lip scrub. Here's the color on the wands. Um, this color is similar. No, it's, it's not so much in dry. It's similar to Deceased, which I'm going to show you in a second, but it's darker. It's just a darker brown purple. It kind of kind of comes across a little. I'm not gonna say black, but it's really dark. It's like a really dark, dark, dark version of uh, deceased. That's what I what I call it. It's a very dark version of deceased. I do like delicious. They have similar names, delicious and deceased. I always get confused with the two. So they're similar colors, but this is just way darker. And I do love this for the fall time. Not winter per se, but fall. Next color is what I was just talking about, which was Deceased. Deceased is a lighter version of Delicious. It's a gray mauve with some brown in it. Very, very pretty. Um, I don't know why, but I've been loving like these type of colors, like Androgyny and like Deceased and all. Like I love like the purple mauves. Like I just, I feel like he needs to make a mini bundle box with the like all his purple mauve colors. I do want to, I would buy that one, but I do want to get his mini nudes volume one. 
I've been thinking about it and I want that one a lot. I really do. That one I want a lot, but it sold out online and it wasn't sold out in the store. I'll probably go back and get that when I have get money. But um I do like that that bundle box. I know he's making a second mini nudes, so which we can all kind of figure what's gonna be in that. But yeah, deceased is delicious. <laughs> um so which one's next? Where is the like see this is the thing, like I there's so many colors. Okay, I'm gonna do this one. Daddy. From um his I'm just say Jeffrey, so I'm not even gonna say who it is the collaboration was from because at this point he's irrelevant. So this is a Jeffree Star lipstick, Daddy. This is a a brown nude, more like a 90s brown with a little hint of gray in it. It's really pretty. I do love this color. I do. Jeffree did a really good job on this color. Really great. I do love Daddy. Next one I love for the fall and winter season, and I wear this, I wear these two all all December long. Like this is my December slash January colors for all of winter and Christmas season. All Poinsettia and Santa Baby from his um, Christmas collection of last year. Very exciting, I love the packaging. We'll do Poinsettia first. Um, it's so pretty. I swatched these two colors on my last of uh, the red swatch video, so you can just go check that one out if you want to see swatches of it, but this is the color here. It's a red metallic poinsettia. It's a very moussey, creamy, buttery texture, and um, I love this color. It's so pigmented. It's like a red Christmas bow on your lips. It's so goddamn gorgeous. Love poinsettia. And then Santa Baby, I love this color. It's a dark wine berry color. Uh, some people think it's a little patchy. It's not fully opaque like his other colors, but I don't think it's patchy. I think this is buildable, and with two coats, you would definitely get full capacity. Opacity. <laughs> so yeah, I love this color. It's really, really pretty. Love it. Love, love, love. And then let me do one more. Which one should I do? I guess I'll do this one. I'll do Unicorn Blood. And I swatched this one on my last red video too. But I want to include Unicorn Blood because Unicorn Blood I wear in the fall and the winter. Like I, I wear this all fall and winter season. Like I really do. Like this is my favorite red. Unicorn Blood is my favorite all time favorite red ever. You ever created. I love Unicorn Blood so much. Okay, that's it. I mean, listen, it was just a small video. I didn't want to go on and on and on about it. But I really wanted to talk to you guys about um, what I really want to talk to you guys about. So, first things first, the Velour Lip Liners. Okay, I was really harsh on them last video, and they are really difficult to work with. They crumple up and everything. It is still my least favorite Jefferson product he ever created. And I do believe he still needs to bring this back to the lab and, and re refix this. But it's workable. Like, I slept on it and I kept going through trial and error. And I read someone's comment on one of his photos that said, listen, um, you have to swipe once around the lip and be quick about it and then take the, li the lipstick and then go over it and it works. That, that method does work. So if you want the lip liners to work, you can't go over it at all. You have to do one swipe around, even swipe and kind of like contour it, not like fill it in at all. Just like do one line around the lip and then be really quick with the, with the lipstick and then apply that on, go like that and that's it. And it won't crumble. But it's, but you know what, it's like, why do we have to go through all that trouble to apply a lip liner? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, now I could use them and they're workable now, but like, why do you have to go through all that effort to use a lip liner? That's what I don't understand. But I'm glad that it's, that it's redeemable. That there is a method and there is something that does work. Because I thought nothing was going to work. So I'm glad I read that comment on his photo. I don't know what her name was, but I'm glad she told us because now we know how to use these lip liners. So 
they're workable. They're workable. Um, will I get another lip liner piece? Never. I'm keeping it real. Never. And that's straight up gangsta. Never, never. But they're workable and I will use these. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the, the drama with the irrelevant bitch Thomas and Jeffree Star. Um, I have to give it to Jeffree Star. Um, to be honest with you, he's a very strong person. And he takes a lot of shit. He takes a lot of shit. Um, things that he doesn't deserve. Yeah, people can say, give him some constructive criticism about his lip liners or whatever, and, and it's constructive criticism and it's nice. But when someone goes to, through his, like, like, really attacks his character and, like, has the goal to show up to his house and have a conversation with him while he, they're texting, while he's texting his enemies, which is Manny and Laura, it's completely hitting below the belt. And... I am so proud of Jeffrey that he was smart enough not to work with him because Thomas wanted to work with Jeffrey with a collab or on YouTube or whatever, and Jeffrey declined. The smartest move Jeffrey probably ever done in his life. And because even though I subscribed to him, I forgot I was subscribed. I don't even know how I was subscribed to him. I, I unsubscribed him so fast when I found out I was subscribed. I didn't even know. I had no clue. I think it was an accident. I didn't mean to subscribe to him. Swear to God, I had no clue I was subscribed to him. But um, he's just so, even before the Jeffrey thing with Jeffrey, he just seems like a very hateful person. And like, when it comes to Manny and Laura, they're not hateful. They're fake. And they are, they're extremely fake. Th but they're not hateful. Thomas, on the other hand, is just a hateful, hateful human being. I just see like, just evil like I don't know I just see evil just bad bad vibes off that guy and I would never in a million years invite that that thing to my house Jeffrey was nice enough to do so he shouldn't have done that and now he knows why but I would never have invited that creep to my house he just screams a little psychopath like screams it he's, he's a little psychopath I can see it um he's delusional he's weird I really don't like him at all um, I'm surprised he has the subscribers he does. And, you know, his video was really telling, the sexism, or racism video. It's like, at that point, just say the name. Like, we know who you're talking about. You know what I mean? Like, you're not talking about race, you're not talking about sexism, you're talking about a specific person here. We all know who you're talking about, you made it crystal clear. You know what I mean? Like, why ignore the elephant in the room at that point? Like, you went on camera, you pressed record, you knew what you were going to talk about. So why not say his name? What's the point? What's the point of making that video? You know what I'm saying? Like, you're, you're deliberately attacking him and trying to make it look like, oh, I was just talking about racism and sexism, but we know what you were getting at. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you're trying to be sneaky and manipulative, and I don't like that. I never thought anyone could be worse than Manny and Laura, but there it is. Thomas is... A, a true disgrace. I, I can't stand him. I can't stand him. And it's very rare that I can't stand someone, but him, I cannot fucking stand. And I don't care if Jeffrey and him become best friends ever again, or friends or whatever ever again. I still would, can't, I would still hate that kid. I just can't take, I can't take him. I can't take him. On another note, um, Manny's ridiculous, ridiculous. And I know this is on a drama channel, so I'm not trying to make this a drama channel. I just want to talk about things. Um, just that ridiculous, ridiculous, ridiculous um, video series. I mean, I mean, it's just so stupid. I mean, I don't even know what to think. I didn't even press play. I didn't even give it a view. The, okay, I, I did view the video, but not to watch it. I didn't watch one second of it. I literally just pressed it just to see the comments. Honestly, and they all were like, are you serious? Like, what the hell is this? Like, this is your apology. This is your, like, I mean, it's so ridiculous, so scripted. It's like worse than, than a scripted version of The Hills on MTV. Like, it's just, it's just the most ridiculous, ridiculous thing. And it's like, why are you not being original? Why are you trying to copy off of Jeffrey and Shane? I know they're not the only ones who ever did, like, um, a video series like that. It's not like Jeffrey and, and, and um, Shane are the only ones who did this. But like, 
it's just how convenient it has been that you decide to do this right after uh, having a huge fight with Jeffrey and then how gr right after how great the, the response of the Jeffrey and Shane Dawson series was and now all of a sudden you decide to do this. It's a little mm, calculated if you ask me. But um, I just think he needs to give it up. Laura, I feel like, is redeeming herself in a way. Um, even though I feel like her attempts are still, like, fake, she's not as bad as Manny. I feel like Manny is, is worse than Laura because he's just really... It's just so obvious now. He's doing it so... It's so calculated. Those two are just... Oof. I don't like them either. Thomas is still the worst, but I don't like them either. Gotta be honest. I do not like them either. They are, um, not my cup of tea. Not my cup of tea. And again, this has nothing to do with Jeffree Star per at all. I'm not being biased. This is me seeing what I'm seeing just as an individual. And this has nothing to do with Jeffree Star. Even if I didn't know Jeffree Star from Hole in the Wall, if I was watching these apology videos and I was watching Thomas, Thomas's racism video, I would still think this was a load of crock. And bullshit. Sorry. But I keep it real, you know I do. And you know I don't lick Jeffrey's balls and I, I just told you. His lip liner is me working. So this is not me being like, oh my god, I worship Jeffrey and I'm being biased and everything. When it comes to Jeffrey, I am very honest. I really am. This is not the I'm very honest. I could have went and lied and said his lip liners were amazing. But I'm an honest person and I when, when something's truthful, it's truthful. When it's there, it's there. And the lip liners did not work for me. And I talked about it. You know what I mean? But that's okay. That's constructive criticism. And that is just something that I know Jeffrey could take. But this is ridiculous. What they're doing to Jeffrey, and again, I, I feel bad for him because I have went through friends and it's like, you look like the bad guy because it's like all these people have something against you. But it's like, it's not, it's, it is us, but not in the way you think. It's us because we're choosing, we're choosing the wrong people in our lives. And we don't mean to, we, tr Jeffrey, I'm just, I'm not even going to say me, I'm just going to say Jeffrey and well, and me too, but Jeffrey trusts the wrong people in his life. And I think that's what's going on here. But then it's like the beauty community is so small, so if you want to have friends in the beauty community, you have to tread lightly. Because it's all a scheme. They're all trying to get something out of you. It's all like a calculated move. It's like playing a chess game with them. It's like, am I being friends with you because, you know, you generally want to be friends with me? Or are you doing it for an ulterior, ulterior motive? And it's like, Jeffrey's not psychic. He doesn't know what these people really want. But he soon finds out. And he picks the wrong people in his life. He really does. And again, that probably is his fault because he trusts people too easily. And, you know, unfortunately, we have bad luck with making friends. Some people just have bad luck when it comes to making friends. We choose the wrong people, and it is what it is. You know what I mean? There are some friends you choose in your life that ends up being great. But most of the time when it comes to me and what looks like it comes to Jeffrey, we choose the wrong people. And, you know, it sucks because... You don't know who the right friend is or who the right person is. But I'm telling you right now, I'm going to pull a page out of Chris Crocker's book. Leave Jeffrey alone. Because to be completely honest with you, Jeffrey is thriving. When you look at all the other people's subscribers, they're going down. When you look at Jeffrey's, they're going up. He's about to hit 11 million, okay? Um... So all of this bullshit is not affecting him. So if you're trying to get back at him or affect him or trying to be vindictive against him, it's not working. So you can keep doing whatever the hell you want to do. Jeffrey will continue to live his life and Jeffrey will continue to expose you bitches if you come for him. Like he did on Twitter yesterday with Thomas and or whatever. So you need to just stop and worry about yourself. Jeffrey so I worry about yourself because you're only hurting yourself attacking Jeffrey because Jeffrey's true and real fans and friends and family know the truth here and we're not stupid you may be fooling some people who really were not there for Jeffrey but the true and loyal friends family and fans of Jeffrey are not going to believe this bullshit and we're not biting we're not biting so just putting that out there um anyways I wish Jeffrey nothing but the best um, I hope 
he um, learns to be a little cautious with these um, people that he chooses to, to have in his life. Um, anyways, another topic I want to discuss before I leave, I leave and I do my outfit of the day. Joe being deported. Now, I'm going to be filming um, episode reviews again for Jersey coming in less than a month. It's coming November 7th. This is, what, the middle of October? So less than a month, I will be doing the, uh, the Real Housewives of New Jersey episode reviews of season 9. I will be doing that. So I'm going to be diving way deeper into my reviews about Jersey. But I did want to discuss this because this really ticked me off. I'm upset because Joe is getting deported to Italy once he leave, once he leaves prison in the beginning of 2019. He's going to be leaving. And it looks like the daughters are distraught. But Teresa, I mean, we don't know what's going on behind closed doors, but it looks like Teresa's just continuing to live her life. It doesn't seem like it's it's really affecting her. I think it's affecting her only because it's affecting her daughters. But her by herself, I just think she's over Joe. And I do believe... And listen, I don't blame her. I, I don't think Joe should be deported, but when Joe does get deported, I don't... I don't, I, don't, I would not move to Italy. I wouldn't do it. Because I have family here. And even though I speak that language and I would understand everything in Italy, it's a totally different lifestyle, it's a totally different thing. You know, I have a whole show here, I have a whole, my whole career is over here, my whole family is over here. I would, and I don't blame Teresa, I definitely don't think she's going to move and I do not blame her. But that being said, Joe should not be deported. Um, because he has lived here his whole life. He has family here. He, you know what I mean, I know what he did was horrible. But he's paying the price. He's spending three years in prison. Do you get what I'm saying? So it's like, he's spent, he's paying his time. And when he gets out of prison, he's probably still going to be paying whatever he's going to be paying. Like he's probably going to be on the house arrest or whatever else. So why go the extra mile and deport him? It's horrible. Like, I know what he did was bad, but like, you're not deporting a racist or a killer or something. You're deporting someone who, who did, I feel like, what he did could be, I don't know, I guess redeemable or could be salvaged if he pays his time what she's doing. A rapist, a killer, all that stuff is not savable. That, that was kind of stunted completely, completely, um, just totally, I mean, there's no forgiving that. And that would, that should be deported back to whatever country they're from. But Joe, I feel like what he did is redeemable and could be forgivable after he pays his time. So why stop make him suffer even more and have get him deported to Italy? I just think that's totally heartless. And whatever judge ruled that, it's just a heartless, heartless person, I believe. I really do. He doesn't deserve that. And I feel bad for the daughters. And if Teresa's going through her own hell behind closed doors, I feel bad for her too. And I don't expect any of them to move to Italy because they shouldn't have to. They shouldn't have to. Their life is here. Just like Joe's life is here. Joe shouldn't be deported. But if, if he has to at this point, he has to. It's not right. It's not right. Um, I think that Teresa is being hot on Joe because of what happened. And I think that Teresa is just... I think her heart grew cold towards Joe. Her heart grew really, really cold. Um, I heard she's not visiting him. She hasn't been. She wasn't there in court with him. Like, her heart's grown cold. And part of it I understand it, but then other part of it's like, listen, you're married to him. You, you made it perfectly clear that you're gonna stick with him through through it all. And now you're changing, and I wonder why. I'm not saying she met someone else. I mean, that's why she's changing a tune, or I don't know. I'm just saying that it looks a little suspicious that she was behind him all this time and then all of a sudden he goes away and now she's not behind him anymore. Now she's like looking for apologies and getting excuses and all this stuff when it's like, you weren't looking for that when, you know, before you went to jail, before he went to jail. So, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with Teresa. I love Teresa, but I feel like she, she needs to drop it drop the BS and just be there for Joe a little more. Especially for the kids. You know what I mean? Because I think it's destroying her kids so much. I know she loves her kids more than anything. So she needs to just 
be there for her kids through this. But I just wanted to talk about these things. I know like the video is going to be a lipstick through fall and winter lipstick series, but I wanted to talk about this because I thought like it's sometimes I just want to talk about things and come on camera and talk about certain issues and stuff. Now, I guess the last thing I want to talk about is my AS ASMR video. Um, yeah, it was, um, wasn't the best. Um, I can admit when I totally don't do something great, I looked over that video again. I was like, should I even upload this? But I promised you guys an ASMR video and that's what I, you, I promised and I, I did it, but <sighs> I mean, you know. I, the only thing that was bugging me through the video, which I did not mean to for it to, I didn't mean for it to come across this way, and I wrote it in the description box in my video. I don't know if you guys read the description box, but I wrote that some parts come across sexual and a little seductive, and that's not what I meant to do. I think it just came across that way when I was speaking, and I didn't mean for that to happen. So it kind of turned into a totally different video than what it was supposed to be meant by, but... Hey, it's still ASMR material. I'm stalking low. I'm tapping on things. So it's still soothing, but it's not like... I just feel like it didn't it didn't come across the way I wanted it to. So I don't know if I'm going to do an ASMR video again. But hey, you try new things. You try so when you see things don't work out for you, you go into something else. You know what I mean? So the ASMR I'm probably won't do it again. But it was something different to try. Now I'm going to go. I'm going to film my outfit of the day for today. And then I'm going to go. Um, Yeah. I have some things coming up in the works for this coming week, so stay tuned for that. Um, yeah. Anyways, I love you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm going to probably title this My Favorite Fall and Winter Lipsticks plus um, just current events that I want to talk about. So I don't know how I'm going to title that yet, but yeah. Because this, this whole video is not just about lipstick. Alright. I love you guys so much and hope you guys enjoy. Bye.